All right, so I just wanted to talk about arterial line waveforms here real quick. So what you see in front of you is a typical arterial line waveform. Now, the very bottom at the beginning on the left here is where the aortic valve opens and you get systole, so you get this swift upstroke. At the very top of the waveform, this is what the machine reads as the systolic blood pressure. Then you get a drop off and you see this little notch. That notch is where the aortic valve actually closes, also known as the dichrotic notch. Then you have your diastolic runoff and then you start the cycle all over again. So this is a typical arterial line waveform. Now, there's two things that can happen that can give you false readings on an arterial line. One is called over damping and the other one is called under damping. So all damping means on a arterial line is Think of it as a shock absorber, um, like shocks on a car when you're going over a bumpy road. There are things that will make the shocks work better, and there are things that will make them work worse. So when you have an over-damped arterial line waveform, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to look super small, and it's because there's something in the line that's causing more loss of energy. This could be things like air or air bubbles in the tubing, it could be kinks in the tubing, or it could be little clots in the tubing. All three of these things will damp or reduce the waveform. Now, why is this important? Because there are hemodynamic effects. It's going to underestimate your systolic blood pressure, it's going to overestimate your diastolic blood pressure, you're going to see a narrowed pulse pressure, but the one nice thing is, the map will not be impacted. And as you'll see when we talk about underdamped waveforms, it's the same thing. This is why so many of us use maps when we're deciding on hemodynamic effects and not systolic and diastolic blood pressures. Now in an underdamped waveform, you're gonna have less loss of energy. So things like extreme hypertension that cause the catheter to whip around can cause artifact on the A-line and tachydysrhythmias where uh, the heart rate is going way too fast can also cause an underdamp of your A-line. Now, the hemodynamic effects here are going to be you're going to overestimate your systolic blood pressure, you're going to underestimate your diastolic blood pressure, and you're going to have a much wider pulse pressure, but again, your MAP will not be impacted. So here's all three different types of waveforms put together. So you have normal on the left, you have overdamped in the middle, and you have underdamped on the right. So it's important to know which one of these you have going on because it will determine what we're doing for our patients. I hope you found this helpful over and under damping and normal. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and questions in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in.